Good morning and welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church in Birchwood, Wisconsin, YouTube service. I am Pastor Barb Clevin, and it is a privilege and an honor to be pastor during this pandemic time, to be able to encourage, hopefully inspire, and nurture people during this time. I've been so encouraged by seeing and observing different things happening in the body of Christ and in this community that have shown the love and the grace of God. Last Easter, there were people from our congregation and people from this community that made Easter meals and delivered them to ones that needed them in our community. Also, I have seen and heard about different ones making special treats and delivering them to homes to brighten up people's days. Flowers have been delivered at certain homes and phone calls and encouraging words bring warmth and connection in this time of isolation. Uh, we are very grateful that people are continuing to bring their tithes and offerings, either by mail or bringing them into the, into the church so that we can keep going here. And it's such a blessing to hear and to see people in our congregation and beyond be still and come to, into the presence of the Lord and to read their Bibles and to pray and ask God for direction and cleansing and being able to know what to do during this time and seeing great peace and great trust in the Lord as we draw close to him. Today is the first Sunday after Easter and it's because Jesus died and rose again that we celebrate our forgiveness of sins that draws us closer to the Father because it is that which brings us into his presence, the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is because of that that we can gather and worship today in our YouTube service. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are here. And you are knowing each and every individual that is watching today. And I pray for your blessing on each one according to their deepest need. And I pray that our ears and our hearts might be open to your message for us today. That Jesus Christ would be glorified. Be glorified in your church, O oh Lord. Open our eyes like you opened up Thomas's understanding and eyes. Open up our eyes as we read the scripture and to be comforted with your truth. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be inspired and breathed on by your Holy Spirit, that we can be encouraged, strengthened, and fortified to move out and be a blessing to those around us with the good news of Jesus, love and grace. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today's message is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. In this reading, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors, 
because they feared the Jewish leaders. They were meeting on a Sunday evening on the day that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and on his side. They were filled with joy when they saw him. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. And then they told them, we've seen the Lord. But Thomas replied, I won't believe unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and put my fingers into them and place my hand in the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing before them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't doubt any longer. Believe. Thomas explained, exclaimed, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miracles and signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you may have life by the power of his name. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to God. Let us look at this disciple named Thomas. He is mentioned in all the Gospels, but only in the book of John do we see and have it recorded the words that he spoke. This is what we know about Thomas. He was one of the 12 disciples. He was with Jesus when he had his ministry for the three years after his baptism with, the, with John the Baptist. And he watched him turn the water into wine. He, healed the, he watched him heal the blind man, cleanse the lepers, and feed the multitudes. Jesus sent Thomas and the other disciples out and gave them authority to cast out demons, heal every disease, and proclaim the kingdom of God. And Thomas was brave. When Jesus was going to Judea to raise Lazarus from the dead, the disciples said, no, we can't go there. When we were there last, they tried to stone and kill you. But Thomas said, let us also go with him and die with him. That's found in John chapter 11, verse 16. Getting back to the evening of the resurrection, why didn't Thomas join the disciples that night when Jesus showed up? Well, he may have needed to be alone. Some of us, in our grief and in our sorrow, we just can't even handle being with anybody else. We are so broken up. But there might be an, been another reason. He may have been disappointed that Jesus didn't end up being the earthly Messiah that the zealots were looking for. Not that Thomas was a zealot, but he had influence from them. Whatever reason it was that Thomas was absent, Jesus appeared to the disciples without him. After seeing the Lord, the disciples ran to tell Thomas, but he didn't believe them 
until he actually saw the hands inside of Jesus and put his finger on those wounds. Thomas's doubts would have been alleviated sooner if he had simply been with the rest of disciples when they gathered together that first night. Isn't that the way it is with us? We aren't called to be isolated from each other. Instead, we are called to build our faith by regularly gathering with other Christians and being encouraged by worshiping and praying together, hearing God's word and sharing our faith. Won't it be wonderful when we can get together and worship together again? Let's look back at Christ's crucifixion. All the, disciple, all the disciples doubted and deserted Jesus at the cross, all except for John. When Mary returned from the empty tomb after telling the disciples that Jesus had risen from the dead, the disciples also doubted. They hid behind locked doors. But then Thomas is singled out in the Gospels because he put his doubts about Christ's resurrection into words. We can be encouraged by Thomas verbalizing his doubts because many of us, no matter how strong our faith, can silently doubt. But Thomas bravely verbalized his doubts and look at the amazing way in which Jesus responded to him. Jesus didn't scold Thomas for his doubt. Instead of rebuking him, Jesus, because he is all-knowing, and he knew the words that Thomas spoke in his previous meeting with the disciples, even when Jesus wasn't there, Jesus knew what he spoke because he is God. And he knows every words, word we speak, and he knows every thought we think because he is God. Put your finger here, Jesus said to Thomas, and look at my hands. Put your hand in the wound in my side. Don't doubt any longer. Thomas believed and exclaimed, my Lord and my God. Jesus understands our battle with doubt and invites us to come near, see, and believe. What doubts do you have? Do you believe that Jesus will strongly bless and help us during this coronavirus time? Do you believe what God promises us in his word? Jesus said, blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Jesus cares about our doubts and our anxieties. We shouldn't be afraid to ask questions and share our doubts. We will find answers in the Bible. How strong is your faith in Christ? Will you continue to persevere to the end? Many of us have Bibles lying around. Some are even gathering dust. Sometimes when we are struggling with doubts, we don't want scripture. We just want to feel good and have somebody place their hand around our shoulder and say, everything's gonna be okay. Overcoming doubt isn't just about feeling good or self-soothing ourselves with TV and keeping busy. It's about knowing the truth and getting back into faith that only comes from the certainty of God's word. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That's found in John chapter eight, verse 32. It's by faith that we can move the mountain of doubt. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. Hear Jesus say to you, do not doubt, but believe. Look how faithfully Thomas followed Jesus after doubt was removed. 
in our reading for today from Acts 5, verses 29 to 42, Thomas and the other disciples were imprisoned. And because that was because the high priests were jealous of them because they were healing the sick and ministering to the multitudes of people that were gathering more and more every day. They were whipped and warned never to speak of Jesus again. But they continued boldly, proclaiming more than ever, going from house to house, telling them of the good news of Jesus' amazing grace. This reminds me of the song, a verse from the amazing grace. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. During this time of isolation, we can have moments of being tired, perhaps crabby, and weary, and anxious, and doubtful. But God wants us to be quiet and be still so we can know our need, be cleansed from sin and selfish desires, and to know his sovereign plan, purpose, and power for our lives. Thomas confessed his doubt, came to the realization Jesus as almighty God, and he, used, he was used mightily as a witness of the good news of Jesus, traveling even further than the other disciples to India, where he ministered the good news of Jesus to the people there, and then he died a martyr's death. The story of Thomas inspires us to deal with our doubts and come to a fuller realization that Jesus is our almighty sovereign God ruler over everything. And when we know this, we can get ready for the most exciting adventure of being spirit-filled, fearless witnesses for our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, bring us close to you. Give us the courage to deal with our doubts and our fears. Let those doubts and fears draw us to your word, that our uncertainties will be replaced with the supreme power of your truth. May we be convinced that Jesus is our sovereign Lord, so that we can become fearless, faithful followers of Jesus and usher in the greatest awakening that this world has ever known. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And now, let us prepare for communion. We confess our sins together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Forgive us for not loving you wholeheartedly. And when we take for granted your love and grace, we humbly bow before you now and ask you to forgive all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy has given us his son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to all who repent and turn from their sins that your sins are forgiven through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus. Amen. And now we will share communion.
in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, gave thanks, blessed it, and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, blessed it, and gave it to them saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins for all people. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The body of Christ given for you and for me. The blood of Christ given for you and for me. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you and give you wonder-working power to stand against all doubt and fear and believe and walk boldly with him until we see him face to face. Amen. church. We praise you, Heavenly Father, for your steadfast love and mercy. Even though we don't know or understand everything, you do. And help us to leave all concerns in your hands. Help us to be transparent and open up our hearts to you and share with you our doubts and our fears and find refreshment from your word. Bless and bring healing to all who struggle and those who are sick. Bring hope to the hopeless, help for the helpless, and comfort to those who mourn. Surround us all with your peace 
and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we need your guidance and protection. Cause us to turn to you in repentance with contrite hearts. Draw us close to you. Guide and protect our nation, our president, our governors, our military, doctors, nurses, first responders, truckers, grocery store workers, and all helpers. Bless our economy and bless our businesses that they may thrive. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all pastors everywhere and give them discernment to minister wisely and effectively, especially during this time of social isolation. Bless all Christians everywhere that we may be still and seek you and be empowered by your Holy Spirit to be bold and courageous witnesses of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are amazing. You are holy and you are just. Convict us, O oh Lord. Show us your way so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. We do thank you, Lord, for your sovereign power, your goodness, and your grace. We worship you with hearts of thanksgiving and hope and anticipation because you are Lord. For all these things and anything else that you see that we need, we ask that you would grant it to us in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.